Hi guys, I wanted to do a quick introductory video to another tool I wrote called Jets here. Here is the blog post. It's entitled Introducing Jets, a Ruby serverless framework. So that's exactly what it is. It's a serverless framework written in Ruby and allows you to write Ruby also. And uh, I built it because I really enjoy working with Rails, uh, Ruby, and AWS, and uh, this allows me to uh, to do that. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, the important things to know to understand how Jets works is to understand two uh, important things from AWS, AWS Lambda and AWS Gateway. So AWS Lambda is functions as a service. So it allows you to upload uh, code and run the code without having to worry about any underlying infrastructure, which is pretty awesome. API Gateway is like a routing layer that allows you to cook, uh, connect URLs or, or API endpoints to uh, Lambda functions. So this uh, kind of is very cool too, and uh, Jets uses kind of both of this to accomplish what it needs to do. All right, so Jets, it takes code and it translates it into Lambda function of the API gateways, essentially, that's what it does. So what does Jets code look like? Well, it looks very much like Rails, right? Um, here, right there, class post inherits from application controller. There is an index action here or index method. There's a show method. And Jets will take the public methods in this class and then translate it to uh, Lambda functions. And here are the Lambda functions right here. And here, the index uh, actions uh, render in JSON. You could render HTML if you want to, just render action, and then the view name and just uh, render it. You could, uh, or you could render JSON if you, let's say you're, you're building API where that's kind of useful. Uh, the, only the public methods, again, will be translated to Lambda functions. Uh, private methods would not, so that allows you to write kind of private methods in here if you want to. Or you could just write methods in, uh, let's say, like a models. A class instead or a library class instead and then if that those won't get translated to uh, lambda functions okay um routes routes so this is what a routes file looks like uh and it connects this this is the git request being connected uh, so it's connecting slash post to uh, the post controller index action and then here are the corresponding uh api uh gateway resources here and there's a documentation page so let's jump to that here, here's Jet's uh, documentation page, and then you click on docs, then you go to routing. And here, I wanted to point this out because there's a, a resources kind of macro here that will expand this into the seven RESTful routes. There's also a any one, and any will just uh, create a, any resource on API gateway, and it will just allow you to call uh, this uh, endpoint with git, post, uh, put, or, or any of the uh, verbs here, HTTP verbs. So that's uh that's what that's about. Moving on down the article here, uh, jobs. So okay, so this is a pretty common pattern. Usually you have a web tier, and then you usually have a worker tier or a background job tier where you could handle jobs that are maybe a little slower and that you don't want to you don't want those jobs to block the web requests. And then you usually also have the scheduler tier or a clock tier that allows you to schedule those jobs. Well, this is the kind of cool thing about AWS Lambda. It is Lambda functions can be associated with a CloudWatch event rule. And the CloudWatch event rule is essentially a scheduler. So you could use it as a scheduler. And this, this is what this is about. So here you see rate 10 hours. That's creating a CloudWatch event rule that's going to run this dig Lambda function every single 10 hours. And here is another way of writing a uh, CloudWatch event rule. It's just using the cron syntax here. So with this syntax, it, this what it's saying is, run the lift uh, Lambda job every single 12 hours. And here is the uh, uh, created uh, Lambda functions. And here are the rules here, the CloudWatch event rule. So with this, you can pretty much get rid of any pet cron uh, server that you might have and just run it all serverless right there. So that's pretty cool. Okay, here's the project structure. Let's kind of click into the documentation because there's a couple more notes in here. So here's the documentation with the table explaining what each folder does. Uh, you get, you have the standard uh, controller, helpers, uh, jobs, uh, models, views controllers there, or view folders there. Uh, and then you also have this app JavaScript, and uh, this is also the newer version of Rails. But uh, uh, it, this is uh, basically the Webpacker folder. Uh, Jets, uh, if you have assets, uh, uses Webpacker underneath the hood to uh, compress your assets and, and, and bundle them together and also SHA them so you can serve them, let's say, through a CDN with a unique URL. Um, so that's what that's all about. And uh, so in this folder, this is where you will put your assets and then Jets will, as part of deployment, uh, compress this for you and compile it. Okay, moving on down. 
how does Jets work? Okay, so uh, right now, AWS Lambda currently doesn't support uh, Ruby. There's even a hilariously uh, petition for it. Uh, and um, because AWS Lambda is not uh, does not support Ruby, you uh, kind of have to use a, a shim. Uh, there's a, that's how that's how you have to add support Ruby yourself with with a shim. And there there's a many kind of people who've documented exactly how to do this, including actually AWS themselves on their blog post right here. So on their blog post right here, entitled "Scripting Languages for AWS Lambda Running PHP Ruby or Go," and now Go is actually officially supported, but this was I guess written before Go was uh, support was added. Uh, they kind of document how you use a shim to uh, add uh, Ruby and PHP support. So uh, the the one kind of little issue with um, Ruby uh, uh, or uh, using a shim is when you shell out and you load another language within another language, there's a, a, a little bit of overhead in there. And so it could result in actually a, a pretty big overhead of like a couple seconds. So um, uh, in order to kind of get around that, Jets uses a shim that loads Ruby, Ruby into the Lambda execution context and keeps it in there. And be, because of that, it actually can get around this and uh, it, it, it obtains a native performance, actually. So here's a kind of quick comparison. Uh, here's a, uh, an example of a curl request hitting a Ruby uh, function uh, uh, via Jets there and then also uh, via Jets. But this is actually a native uh, a Python method here. And uh, you can see that the performance is essentially a tie. Uh, so, so that's pretty cool there. Um, let's see what else. I cover performance uh, Ruby error. So with the shim, you might think, okay, no, now I'm gonna have to, you know, deal with the shim. By the way, the shim's written in Node uh, currently, and uh, so um, uh, you might think, okay, you're gonna have to debug Node errors. Well, uh, that's actually uh, not the case. Uh, Jets uh, takes the steps and surfaces the Ruby errors all the way back up to the Node shim and to the format that allows it to be presented in the uh, AWS Lambda console. So you basically never switch mental context. And the analogy, the analogy I would use is uh, Ruby itself. So Ruby is written by Matt, and he's a, really a C coder. So Ruby uh, is uh, Ruby is uh, written in C, but how often do you have to debug C, right? Or you, you rarely ever have to debug C. Actually, I, I, I never really have to do it myself. Uh, because uh, the interpreter does a good job of surfacing up the error all the way back up to uh, Ruby land. So you don't really switch them into context. Okay, here's a quick start on how to use Jets. Um, there uh, is also, um, uh, let's see, quick start there. Shows you how to run the local server, which I'll cover in, in a second here. Then it shows you how to deploy. Then they, these are screenshots. Here are the functions it creates. And this quick start essentially create a, a CRUD application. And then uh, here are the API corresponding API gateway resources. Uh, here's what the screenshot the demo looks like. Here's actually the live demo here. Um, actually, let me actually just go into the live demo I kind of have right here, Jets. So I'm going to go use Jets URL, and that's going to uh, spit out the uh, the URL endpoint right here. And then I can kind of go through here and uh, click around. So there's Jets right there. There's just a welcome page uh, with the welcome message. And here's the post uh, controller. Um, then uh, let's see. So you can click around. And you can see it's 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 pretty it's it's, it's pretty fast uh, because uh, again uh, it's loading the Ruby interpreter and keeping a memory there. So you can go create new test post, test post, submit. Right. Uh, you can edit it, edit, edit, submit, and then let's go back to the index. And you can see it right there. So there's a, a quick a live demo. Um, I'll do a, a more uh, another video about actually going through the demo, but I want to keep this a video a uh, reasonable length. Okay, so there's a lot, a couple other features here in Jets here. There's pre-warming support, so uh, loading in the Ruby interpreter memory, the, uh, uh, it, it's actually uh, done automatically uh, as part of deployment, also uh, um, on a scheduled basis. It's part of pre-warming support right here. I'll just I'll just open it up. <laughs> All right, so here's pre-warming support right here, and uh, there are reasonable defaults. Uh, I might change this, but these are the current defaults right now. 30 minutes, uh, so we'll run the pre-warming job every single 30 minutes. And the pre-warming job essentially calls um, all the Lambda functions with a special payload. So this actually solves the co-star problem because this co-star problem actually exists for any language in Lambda. Um, with AWS Lambda, the, there's this something called the co-star problem where the first time you call your Lambda function ever, it's uh, it can be quite slow depending on how it's set up and depending on how a larger application is actually and how much uh, you know code it needs to load up into memory. So um, so people get around this co-star problem by pre-warming their functions. So they basically call the function 
with a, a special payload and that kind of then then loads a lot of the code up and then it returns a response right away but then uh, that allows lambda to actually spin up a con uh, essentially a container and and, and kind of lambda keeps that container around for a little bit of time before it recycles the containers but uh, with pre-warming basically you you avoid that co co star penalty and and th this uh, is actually built into jets already um, so uh, that keeps it nice and fast. And also there's actually a header that uh, uh, it's added and inserted into the response header here that shows you whether or not the, the Lambda function has been pre-warmed. And so you can see how many times it's being pre-warmed. You could basically look at that and kind of play with those uh, numbers and settings and, and kind of uh, make the, that those settings kind of fit uh, to, to your, your application's requirements. Okay, so local server. So um, the next one, um, let me kind of open this up uh, in a new tab. Next one is local server. Local server, what that's about is, um, uh, oops, I think I, let's try that again. Close this, close this, okay. So what that's about is uh, you could start up a local server on your machine and that mimics API gateway so you could do local testing before you deploy. So that's uh, really beneficial for kind of quick debugging and testing there. Uh, call, another way to test locally is lo uh, Jets call. Jets call will, um, you could pass it basically a uh, identifier and the identifier, um, uh, can uh, as long as it's close enough, it will find your your class and your uh, your method, and and you could pass it an event, and then you could even pass it through JQ, and then you could kind of basically test everything. Uh, this one's actually remote mode, but if you pass it dash dash local here, then it's actually hit the local function in your application code on your machine. Um, uh, without the local, it's gonna hit the lambda function itself. Um, but and, and you only have to pass the identifier close enough because uh, this method actually or this command will do some guessing and uh, kind of look up your own code and find the uh, corresponding class and, and, and method. Okay, or REPL console. REPL console, that's very useful for just like, um, you know, again, quick debugging, quick testing. You could do a Jets console, then you can play around with your models and, and your coding here and, and your methods in there. Database support. So currently, Jets supports. Uh, Postgres with the Active Record Adapter and also uh, DynamoDB. Uh, so if you're familiar with Active Record, it's just uh, it's just Active Record right there. So you have everything in Active Record. Uh, polymorphic support. So this one's um, this one was kind of fun. So polymorphic support is it, it, Jets, even though it's a Ruby serverless framework, allows you to write also in other languages and Node and Python in, in this case. And so let's say you there's uh, the use case for this, and I found it useful for a project is you are have existing Python code uh, that's in written serverless. Uh, you could just literally copy and paste it in there and kind of move on with life and then connect it up. And this is what kind of looks like right here. Okay. Next one, uh, uh, function properties. So function properties, um, every single Lambda function, you could uh, basically uh, give it different properties like it's the timeout setting or the memory setting, even VP say settings or uh, dead, uh, dead queue uh, settings, things like that. So you could actually define the settings uh, at the function level, at the class level, or at the application kind of globally level. So the way you do that is you just, for the function level, you throw the timeout uh, right above the method. And then at the class level, you just append class underscore in front of it. And then at the application level, you, you do in the configuration file here. And you could basically, you could change any uh, function property because all these kind of uh, convenience methods do is delegate to these property and class properties method, which uh, gives you access to all uh, the properties that, uh, that are associated with Lambda functions. So that's, that's, that's pretty um, handy. And then deployment. Um, deployment uh, will deployment will package up your code, build the CloudFormation templates underneath the hood. Jets is uh, doing a lot of this with CloudFormation. Uh, and also uh, bundle up the Ruby interpreter as well as uh, any like, available compiled gems uh, into your package and then deploy it to uh, AWS Lambda and then create the API gateway resources. All right. So uh, I think that is it. Check out the documentation site right here. Uh, hopefully uh, you guys uh, give it a try and, and I'm looking for any feedback you guys have here. And um, hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you like videos like this, uh, like it and share it and to encourage more content like this. Uh, if you want to watch future videos like this, subscribe for more content like this. And thanks so much for watching guys. Cheers.